Samir, thank you for that uh, very uh, florid introduction. Uh, but I can say that even if my formal rank is uh, ministerial, I'm most at home uh, in the company of people like yourselves. And to commemorate that, I've come without a tie to show that uh, I'm uh, one of you. Um, and let me use the opportunity to thank Samir and Ambassador uh, Chinoy and other members of the organizing group for having taken the trouble to come to Niti Aayog and brief me on the structure of uh, the, uh, the T20. Uh, I'll, uh, I think we're starting 10 minutes late, and I think um, the allotted time is 15 minutes, so uh, please keep me honest. Um, uh, so uh, actually, uh, this is uh, uh, only the second time that I've been involved with the T20, and the first time that I've been at an inception conference. Uh, the only other time was... Uh, at the, uh, during the Argentine presidency, where I happened to be in Bombay when Gateway House was hosting uh, a T20 meeting. At that time, it came across as really fairly uh, um, closely held. I mean, it took uh, a lot uh, for uh, Manjeet Kriplani to include me since I was not there. Well, I was sort of there representing Bruegel, but Bruegel uh, was not very active uh, in the T20. And I'm very pleased uh, that at least on, based on this inception uh, conf uh, uh, conference, that there seems to be a great deal of outreach and transparency to a broad group of uh, uh, institutions and individuals. Uh, I had been looking for, uh, for somebody who was very kind to me, John Curtin. I don't know if he's here, uh, but uh, John, uh, uh, I saw that you're on the program and uh, you've been very influential and helpful in my, in my thinking about the G20. Um, I also don't know if there's anybody from CG here because, um, huh? okay, uh, because uh, when um, uh, Canada was co-chair of the uh, 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 of the framework working group with um, with India, um, 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 Paul Sampson uh, was uh, uh, was the representative. I think he was at the central bank. He's now taken over from Rohinton Medhora at uh, CG, and I'll tell you why I'm referring to uh, CG and Paul in just a minute. Um, okay, so. Um, ORF had given me some talking points, which were largely about digital public goods. And I know that's going to be the topic of what is to follow. But I thought, uh, since this is an inception conference, and since Neeti uh, is, um, as it were, cross-vertical, um, cross that I might talk a little bit about uh, how the work, collective work of the T20 might be helpful to stimulate, uh, uh, as it were, debate and thinking above and beyond what is likely uh, to take place in the negotiations leading up to the leaders uh, communique in September. Um, and this is where my um, debt to Paul Sampson, um, which I've shared with Poonam Gupta, who's in the audience, um, is relevant. So when Paul and I talked in Ottawa a couple of years ago, uh, just, uh, just off, uh, as it became possible to travel to Canada after COVID, you know, he made two or three points that have stayed with me. He had said, look, the world uh, is groping for a new growth model because there's a lot of confusion and uncertainty. There's a sense that the old verities no longer apply. Uh, but by the same token, it's not at all clear what the new verities are. 
And he went on then to say that, you know, India, because it's a disputatious and argumentative place, but also because uh, we are, I think, um, uh, well endowed with domestic think tanks, domestic thinkers, and also uh, uh, there is a large Indian diaspora. He said, you know, uh, India should take up the task of clarifying what that new growth model uh, might be. Now, it's perfectly sensible and reasonable and appropriate that the structure of the task forces under the T20 should mirror, well, uh, should uh, build upon priorities for the Indian presidency, um, you know, things that India wants to showcase to the world. But I think that the challenge is wider or deeper uh, uh, than this. Um, and I think as recently as this last week, uh, many of you would have seen, as it were, two things in the international press, which I think we should regard as stimuli and challenges. One was the article by Martin Wolf um, in Wednesday's FT, um, building upon uh, what was published, uh, what, uh, what the World Bank brought out in uh, Global Economic Prospects, uh, which is that the developing world potentially faces a lost decade. And as somebody who worked on Latin America in its lost decade, uh, in the lead up to the Brady Plan, uh, this is not, uh, as it were, uh, this is not chicken little, uh, saying that the sky is going to fall in. This is serious. The second um, item in the international media that uh, some of you may have seen uh, is uh, the cover article in this week's Economist, Zero Sum. How, as it were, in the confusion, geopolitical, economic, distributive, uh, that the world finds itself in, partly because of um, uh, the Ukraine conflict, uh, you know, all of the old principles that we held dear in terms of uh, uh, positive sum, uh, um, the positive sum to be gained by uh, international cooperation, much of that is being thrown out the window. And this is not particularly about developed and developing, but uh, it's also become, as you know, a source of conflict uh, and tension between um, the two sides of the Atlantic um, surrounding the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, why am I saying all this? Because it does seem to me that this T20 has both an opportunity and even an obligation to present to, um, uh, to the leaders or to represent through the, uh, um, through, uh, the, the channels that exist, uh, you know, some clarification of the issues uh, and uh, the elements of a new growth uh, uh, paradigm. Um, I, as was mentioned by Samir, I did have the um, uh, privilege of uh, being the chief economist of Royal Dutch Shell, um, uh, and. In, at least uh, amongst, uh, in the business schools, uh, Shell is associated for having uh, pioneered um, scenario techniques. Um, and the, um, you know, the essence of scenario techniques, uh, they, uh, they come in many flavors, each corporation that uses them adapts them to their own needs. But it is essentially, you know, to, as it were, look at what is reasonably certain, demographics being the most obvious, technology 
being um, another dimension. What is most stable in the world going forward? And then to think about uncertainties. Another way of putting it that um, you know, it's, uh, many of you would know uh, the, the statement by uh, William Gibson uh, that the future is already here, but it is unevenly distributed. So, you know, what I believe is the challenge facing this T20 and facing the task forces that feed into this T20 is to try and bring some clarity on how we make sure that in response to both the, pol well, largely to the geopolitical issues uh, that uh, the world is facing right now, we don't end up in the kind of beggar thy neighbor policies that intensified the Great Depression. Now, you know, when you're coming off a as it were, a hyper boom of the kind that, um, you know, the world had enjoyed, um, certainly before the global financial crisis, you might think that, uh, that that is a low probability event, but, uh, uh, you know, things can, su can surprise uh, one by the, uh, uh, or let, let me put it slightly differently, that, you know, you may think that, uh, wiser councils will prevail, and I hope they will, uh, but uh, it's not something to be taken for granted, and it's not something that's going to be hammered out in the drafting of the final communique. So I'm just, in a sense, asking that this T20 raise its level of ambition. So uh, just to summarize, I may not um, have exhausted all my time, and I don't know whether there's an opportunity for q and I think the first point we want to make is that where the world has been uh, in recent G20s has been very injurious to the um, emerging markets and the low-income countries. So that's where the um, fires are burning. S second, that uh, what my former colleague uh, Jean Pisani Ferry mentioned, that uh, there are two, as it were, major disruptors, if I could call them that, um, in, um, in the global landscape that uh, a group like this needs to take into account. The first is the macroeconomics of the climate transition. We've been, you know, talking about sectoral, uh, as it were, initiatives, but I think there's a lot of uh, uncertainty and disagreement whether the climate shock is going to be a positive shock macroeconomically, Jean had argued uh, that uh, actually because it's been so delayed, it could be quite a negative shock. And so if the G20's fundamental commitment is to, uh, what is it, robust, uh, resilient, balanced, and inclusive growth, growth is what's important in this, and you need to make an assessment of that. Um, and the second, um, as it were, bolder um, uh, along the way is what, again, Jean has talked, the return of asymmetry in global uh, economic and power relations that, you know, all the big boys have gone about weaponizing economic interdependence and turning what ought to have been and perhaps again will be a positive sum game into potentially a zero sum game. So I just wanted to say that um, the world is looking to some extent to India, and India is looking to, to, um, to some extent to this group, as it were, to help in 
uh, a redefinition of the development challenge um, at a time of great confusion. And uh, certainly from my perch at Niti Aayog, uh, I always will remain available to, uh, you know, uh, to engage uh, with, uh, with the T20 and uh, to contribute as and when I'm um, required to. So thank you very much and let me hand over uh, to the organizers.